Good morning, friends. It's a beautiful day outside today, and I thought I would share with you the story of the tiny seed. In this story today, you're gonna to hear all different ways that seeds can travel. When you listen to the story, you're also going to hear some things that seem like they could really happen, and then there's gonna be other things that seem like, mm, I'm not so, so sure that could really happen. So make sure you listen closely today and find out all the ways that you think the seed could really travel, okay? All right, so this is The Tiny Seed and it's written by Eric Carle. Brennan's gonna come join me and sit next to me on the carpet, on the carpet, not on the carpet. He's gonna sit next to me on the couch so we can enjoy the story. The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across, across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to go? I'm sorry, will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they going? Those seeds do look gigantic, don't they? But there's the tiny seed. One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burn it up, but the tiny seed sails on with the others. I wonder, do you really think a seed could get that close to the sun? But there's the tiny seed still flying on. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. I also wonder if the seed could really travel that far. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. There it is. And that seed, I think, is the one that ends up drowning. We know that seeds need water, but I think that might be too much water. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry, and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Oh, it's like it's hiding. I think it's down there. That one looks really small. Now it is winter. After their long trip, the seed settles down they look just as if they're going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. So I like how Eric Carl drew this picture because this is that soil. And then of course here is the snow and this is above the snow so it's kind of like your perspective is a little bit different to help us see this picture now it is spring after a few months the snow has melted it really is spring birds fly by the sun shines rain falls the seeds grow so round and full they start to burst open a little now they are not seeds anymore, they are plants. First they send the roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up toward the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plant. It's a big fat weed. And it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants and that little plant dies. That's why lots of times people pull out the weeds is because they're like big bullies. They come along and they take up all of the water and the space to spread out. So oftentimes people pull out the weeds. I know at our house, Mr. Parmalee picks out all the weeds, especially the dandelions. 
The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late, hurry! But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. And there it is. And look at down there are those little roots, those little root hairs, and up shoots the stem. Oh no, the warm weather also brings the children out to play, the grubby little kids. Just kidding. They too have been waiting for sun and springtime. One child doesn't see the plant as he runs along and oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. I think that could really happen. In fact, maybe that's Brennan's foot squishing a plant. <laughs> Just kidding. But that happens sometimes. It's an accident. Kids are so excited to get outside and play, they accidentally step on a new plant that's growing. The tiny plant that grew from this tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves and the other plant has seven. Look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what is happening? First there are footsteps, then a shadow looms over them, the hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. I wonder who that could be and why that person is picking the flower. Oh, a boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. That's so kind. That reminds me of when Jack picked flowers for me and he brought them home one day. Flowers make me happy. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on, it doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. Do you think that could really happen? I have never seen a flower that is that much taller than a house. Now there are flowers that are called mammoth sunflowers and they do grow really, really tall, but not taller than my house. I think Eric Carl embellished a little bit. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. And look at all those insects and the beautiful birds that are coming along because they are the pollinators. They're the one that's gonna take that pollen to the next plant so we can have new seeds. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower and this time the flower seed pods open. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. This looks like the beginning of the story, doesn't it? Because it seems like it's a life cycle. The and and that was the story the tiny seed i had asked you to think about things in the story that um could really happen and things that could not really happen now i don't really think that flower could grow that tall but i do think and i do know that the wind carries the seeds i don't know that they get that close to the sun but what do you think what do you think could happen to those seeds that was in the story that could really happen or could not really happen. Thanks for listening today and I hope you enjoyed the story. Have a good day.